So in this video, we're going to prove that the sine of iz is equal to i cinch z, and the cinch of iz is equal to i sine z. Pretty cool stuff, right? So um, it's kind of an interesting relationship when you involve complex numbers, right? So this relates the complex sine function to the complex hyperbolic sine function. Uh, both of these do, right? So it's an interesting uh, relationship. It's almost like you can factor out the i and you get the other one, right? So sine of az and then you can pull it out and you get that. It's really cool. And look, cinch of iz and like you can pull it out and, and you can get that. Um, let's go ahead and try to prove this. I, I haven't done this in a while, but I, I think we should be able to do it. The most important thing is that we have the definitions of sine and cinch. Once we have that, um, this should not be difficult. Let's find out. So first recall the definition of the complex sine function. So that's sine z equals e to the i z minus e to the negative i z all over 2i. So that's, that's the definition of the complex sine function. So now you might think, well, what's the definition of uh, the hyperbolic sine, the complex, complex version? Well, it's simply cinch z and it's just e to the z minus e to the negative z all over two. So it's just like the, like the real version, right? So very easy to, to memorize. Well, for values of x, it's, it's the same, right? If it's a real number, you get the same, same formula. Okay, so let's, let's call this one, and let's do proof of one. So proof of one, let's see. So maybe we'll start with, um, maybe let's just start with this. Okay, and then they just show it's equal to this. Let's, let's find out. So I'm gonna write down sine iz, sine iz, and it should work. <laughs> let's find out. So we're basically gonna replace all of the uh, z's with iz. So it'll be e to the i, and then iz, right? Just replacing z with iz. Okay, that's all we're doing. Minus e to the negative i, and then replace z uh, with iz. So let's, let's try it. This is gonna be. This is kind of fun because you know, uh, I haven't done this right. Uh, so it's 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 if, if it works, it's it's great. So e to the i times i z. So that's i times i. So i squared is negative one, right? So I think I'm gonna skip a step here. I squared is negative one. So this is e to the negative z minus, and then here it's uh, uh, negative i times i. So that's gonna be negative i squared. So that's negative negative one. So that's one, right? That's one. That's going to be um, e to the z all over, right, all over uh, 2i. Okay, so let's pause here for a moment. What are we trying to show? Uh, we're trying to show that this is equal to uh, i cinch z. So uh, you'll notice uh, that cinch z doesn't have an i there. So what we have to do is manipulate this. So we have to get rid of this i. So to do that, we have to multiply by 1 in a clever way. Watch this. I'm going to multiply by i over i. You see that? i over i. And what that does is it allows us to do some math. So I'm gonna put this i on the outside. And this i times this i gives us i squared, so it becomes negative one. And then we have a two here, right? So maybe I'll just put negative two. That might make it a little bit easier to understand. So i times i is i squared, so that's negative two. And then here we have e to the negative z minus e to the z. Ah, okay, this is great because now you can distribute the negative upstairs. So that's going to be i, and then switching the signs, this is going to become a positive e to the z minus e to the negative z all over 2, right? Oh, this is so cool. This is i cinch z, right? Good stuff. Oh, this is, this is one of those, those feel-good problems, right? Because it always feels good when you figure it out. So Let's just go over it really quickly again. So we started by um, writing this down, right? And then we replaced all of the z's with i z's, right? And you say, okay, i times i is i squared, and then i times i is i squared, but there's a negative, so it's positive. You say, okay, now you're here, right? What do you, what do, you do now? You have to get rid of that. It's tempting to just multiply by i, but you can't do that. But you can multiply by one in a clever way. This i, we pulled it out. i times i is i squared, that gives you negative one. Then you can distribute it upstairs, so this becomes negative, this becomes positive, and there it is, that's the definition of cinch z. So sine iz is equal to i cinch z. Let's go ahead and, and do the other one. I think I'm gonna, I think I can squeeze it in uh, down here. So we have to prove that cinch iz is equal to i sine z. So proof, proof of two, we'll call this two. 
So we'll start with sinh iz and we'll show it's equal to, to i sine z. So again, I haven't thought about it. We're just gonna like do it and uh, hopefully it works. So sinh iz, sinh iz. So basically we just have to look here at the sinh definition and replace z with iz. So this is e to the iz minus e to the negative iz over two. Okay, so now I think we have to we have to pause. So all we've done is replace z with iz. So what are we trying to show? Right now we have to think, what are we even doing? Well, we're trying to show it's i sine z. So this is almost sine z, except it's missing the i. So what we can do is we can put it there in a clever way. We can write this as i, parentheses, e to the iz, because we want an i there, so we put it there. And then when we attempt to take it away, we're pretty much done with the proof, right? Because look, these i's cancel. And so now we have i sine z. This will be i sine z. So we showed that sinh iz is equal to i sine z. So we've proved uh, this beautiful relationship uh, between um, the hyperbolic um, sine function and uh, the regular sine function, you know, when you're dealing with, with complex numbers. Uh, really cool problem, right? I, I uh, Kind of fun, kind of good stuff. So yeah, take care.